I'm Professor Jack Shaheen. I was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm an American with Arab roots. My family immigrated to the States in, uh, right after the First World War. I became interested in ascertaining how Arabs are portrayed in American popular culture in the mid-1970s. As a result of my teaching at the American University of Beirut, I was there for one year, 1974-75, and traveled extensively throughout the Arab world. At the time, it's interesting, uh, here I am, I'm 40 years of age. Uh, <laughs> I had never met an American Muslim, or a Muslim per se. It wasn't until I went to Beirut that I went to my first mosque, uh, that I interacted with Muslims. And when I returned to the States, I, I, you know, I did a lot of, I went to the south of Lebanon, the camps, went to Jordan, um, saw Israeli warplanes, or American warplanes, flown by Israeli pilots, dropped a few bombs on Beirut. And, and all of this was very, very new to me. So when I came back to the States in 1975, August of 1975. And all of a sudden I noticed these ugly Arab caricatures popping up on my TV set and decided to monitor, really, uh, Arab images on American television. And I did some research and came out with an article called The TV Arab. And that was at the end of 75, I finished the article. If we are aware of it, if we know about its pervasiveness and the damage that it creates, there will be gradually a correcting and, and we will, in time, these stereotypes will vanish. The books uh, that I've written, uh, The TV Arab, 1984, Arab and Muslim Stereotyping in American Popular Culture, you know, 10 years later, uh, Real Bad Arabs, How Hollywood Vilifies the People, and Guilty, Hollywood's Verdict on Arabs after 9-11. After the main purpose of the book, one is to identify the image. What are the images in TV shows, in films? Why do they exist? Hmm. What can we do to bring about a change? For television, the TV Arab, I watched, took notes, for maybe eight years on eight televisions, uh, eight years of television viewing. Everything from children's TV programs to documentaries to sitcoms to dramas. The same thing with Arab and Muslim stereotyping in American popular culture, although I devoted more time to news. Uh, I hadn't done that before. Uh, in Real Bad Arabs, How Hollywood Vilifies the People, that took 20 years uh, to write that. And I found, and, and, and I found more than 1,000 movies that in one way or another vilify all things Arab and all things Islam. And what's interesting about that is that I saw all these films. I mean, this was not a research project. I looked at the films. I examined them. I saw, for example, I'd have to look at one film several times, then do research on the film. It took forever to find the film. The films were not easy to find. But basically I found, I would say, 99% of all films, uh, done, you know, all American films and British films, uh, that in one way or another were produced since 1896 up until the present day uh, that, that, that defined uh, what an Arab was. And, and the categories were, were relatively simple. They were basically primarily all villains all villains. Uh, you had the oil shake, you know, the shake image. Uh, someone mentioned in the Screens of Terror conference that there should be a, a paper about the heroic, exotic Arab. And he mentioned that the Valentino films. I was upset that I didn't include that in the documentary. Well, Valentino was not an Arab. I mean, the shake, in both shake movies, it's a Scottish Earl who wears Arab garb. It's sort of like a, an early version of Lawrence of Arabia. So there was never really a heroic Arab that, 
the fair Western maiden fell in love with. You know, it was always a Westerner wearing Arab clothes. But I, I imagine the clothing, you know, in the desert and so forth, the exoticism, uh, that, that way there was some attraction. Whether she would have fallen in love with him or the, if he wore a three-piece suit with a nice tie or a cravat, we don't know. And, and, and so, you know, you had that image, you had the wealthy oil shake, you have these uh, bargainers in souks who try to cheat you, you have the dense bodyguards uh, guarding the castle. And then when it comes to women, you have bundles in black, everybody wears black clothing. You have the woman as the terrorist, the exotic belly dancer, and occasionally a heroic uh, woman like Cleopatra in some of the Cleopatra films. But by and large, our, most women are subservient uh, to the men. They, they, they're sort of relegated uh, to the shadows of the film. And so you take all of these characters, and, and if you look at it historically, no group has been vilified as long or as, with such consistency as the Arab Muslim. No group. And yet, the sad part in all of this is I, I, Hollywood has yet to publicly condemn these stereotypes. I think the problem is that, you know, as to whether there is a deliberate attempt, I, I think some producers have an agenda. Everyone has a point of view. Some producers are very liberal about, just like ordinary citizens, about the Arab-Israeli conflict, wanting a peaceful resolution, therefore the films have a tendency to be more balanced. Others could care less and then maybe opt for the stereotype because it's easy to do. And then some have an agenda. Like uh, uh, the two Israeli producers, Menachem Golan and Yoram Globus, who bought Canon, you know, American company, and did more than 30 films that in one way or another uh, vilified Arabs. I mean, one film, uh, they showed female showgirls from Las Vegas uh, going to the Middle East and beating up Arabs. I mean, that's a movie done by Golden and Globus. And if you look at, if ever I did a film festival on the, on the propaganda films of Golden and Globus, I think that would expose that. But we need something like that. You know, here we are, Canon films, this is how, you know, within a relatively short period of time, these two Israeli filmmakers hmm, used film as propaganda to hate Arabs. And then that, that takes away the argument. You show the films, you show the image. The images in the film speak for themselves. You also kept an eye on the presentation of Arabs in news. Yes. Well, the, the, what's interesting is the, the movie Arab, the TV Arab, is the comic book Arab, the Arab in novels, the Arab, the Arab in newscasts. Uh, it's the same in all uh, aspects of American popular culture. I, I mean, on news, for example, you almost never see uh, the Palestinian as victim. You know, when Palestinians are killed, they're invisible. We don't see, by and large, Palestinian parents mourning over the loss of their son. They, they, their lives, media-wise, are not equal or not worth as much to life as the life uh, of an Israeli. They never have. We just don't, we don't view or empathize with them as much as we do uh, with, with Israeli victims. It's a reflection of American policy. We're pro-Israel, therefore most of what we see when it comes to coverage of the Middle East is pro-Israeli. 